Our next lesson is piecewise function. There are functions that require more than one formula in order to obtain the given output. There are instances when we need to describe situations in which a rule or relationships changes as the input value crosses certain boundaries. In this case, we need to apply the piecewise function. A piecewise function is the function in which more than one formula is used to define the output. Each formula has its own domain, and the domain of the function is the union of all these smaller domains. So we notate this idea like this. We have f of x is equal to the formula 1 if x is in the domain 1. And formula 2, if x is in domain 2. And formula 3, if x is in domain 3. So let us have an example. A user is charged 250 pesos monthly for a particular mobile plan which includes 200 free text messages messages in excess of 200 are charged one peso each so let us represent the monthly cost for text messaging using the function t of m where m is the number of messages sent in a month okay so in this case our function is t of m so, in this case, mga anak, we will have two formulas. Yung first formula natin is, if si user ay nakapag-send ng text message not exceeding 200. While, the second formula will be, kapag si user ay nakapag-send ng text messages more than 200. So, ang gagawin natin ngayon ay ang ating first formula. So, we have T of M that is equal to 250. Bakit? Kasi ang first formula natin is hindi daw mag -e exceed sa 200 text messages yung masesend ni user. So, T of M is equal to 250 if the number of text messages is greater than 0 but less than or equal to 200. But, if yung user natin ay nag-send ng more than 200 messages, matacharge siya ng 1 peso each message na nasent niya. Lahat ng lumagpas dun sa 200 free text message. So, magkano ang babayaran niya sa monthly mobile plan niya? So, that is our second formula. It will become T of M is equals to 250 plus Yung 1 peso, multiply natin kung ilan yung sumobra sa 200 text message. So, it will become 1 multiplied by the number of text messages minus 200. So, ito ang gagamitin nating formula if the number of text messages is greater than 200. Okay. So, let's have an example for this uh, situation. Let's say, ang na-text or ang na-send na text message ng user natin ay 5. Okay, 5 text messages lang sa isang buwan. Ano ang gagamitin nating formula? Is it formula 1 or formula 2? Since the number of text message is 5, and that is between 0 and 200, we will use the formula 1. So, therefore, if we have T of 5, dahil 5 nga lang yung text niyang messages, we have T of 5 is equal to 250. Dahil ito, yung formula 1, ang ating ginamit. Okay. Because the number of text messages is between 0 and 200. Now, what if si user naman ay 
nag-text ng more than 200. So, ibig sabihin, nag-exceed na siya dun sa 200 free text messages. Let's say, ang na-text niya ay 230. So, T of 230. So, anong formula yung gagamitin natin? Is it formula 1 or formula 2? So, Since 230 is greater than 200, we will use formula number 2. So, therefore, T of 230 is equal to 250 plus the 1 peso multiplied by 230 minus 200. So, we have 250 plus 230 minus 200 is 30. Multiplied by 1, that is 30. So, magkano ang babayaran niya? 250 plus 30 is 280 pesos. If nakapag-send siya ng 230 messages. Let us have our next example. A certain chocolate bar costs 50 pesos per piece. However, if you buy more than 5 pieces, they will mark down the price to 48 pesos per piece. So, let us use a piecewise function to represent the cost in terms of the number of chocolate bars bought. Let's say, if you are to buy 2 pieces of chocolate bars, magkano ang isang chocolate bar? So, ang price niya ay 50 pesos. Pero, kapag daw bumili ka ng greater than 5, let's say, bibili ka ng 7 pirasong chocolate bar, ang magiging presyo daw ng chocolate bar is 48 pesos per piece. So, paano natin ipapakita yon using piecewise function? So, let us have F of n is equal to our first formula will be kung bibili ka ng chocolate bar that is between 0 or wala kang bibilin to 5. So, ang babayaran mo daw ay 50 pesos each. So, 50 multiplied by the number of chocolate bars. If you will buy a number of chocolate bar that is greater than 0 or less than or equal to 5. But, if you will going to buy more than 5 chocolate bars, the price will be 48 pesos each. So, the formula number 2 will be 48 multiplied by n or the number of chocolate bars. If the number of chocolates that you will buy is greater than 5. Again, let's have an example for this one. If you are going to buy 2 pieces of chocolate bar, what formula you will use? Is it formula 1 or formula 2? So, ang titignan mo dito ay yung ating mga conditions. So, is F of 2 will fit in formula 1 or formula 2? So, siya ay formula 1 because 2 is between 0 and 5. So, we will use the first formula which is 50 multiplied by N. So, we have 50 multiplied by 2. 2. So, F of 2 is 100. Dahil dalawang chocolate bars lang ang bibiling mo, ang babayaran mo ay 100 pesos. But, kung ang bibiling mo naman ay 7 pieces. So, F of 7. So, si F of 7 ay saan nabibilang? Formula 1 ba or Formula 2? So, since 7 is greater than 5, kay formula 2 siya. 
Okay, so ang gagamitin natin is f of 7 is equals to 48 multiplied by 7 pieces of chocolate bars. So that is equal to 336. So f of 7 is 336.